I am going to be fitting this and this is a flat top piston and valve from GMAC Custom Parts. Hi guys, Jamie at Cluey Amateurs here, I hope you're doing well. Today we're back with an air gun video. It's a video on this, a gun which I've shown once on the channel before, about a year ago. This is my Crossman 1377. Now, about a year ago, I made a video uh, showing all of the mods I've done to this gun, talking a bit about the gun, and doing some power and accuracy tests. Now, in that video, I said that I didn't plan on changing the piston and valve setup in here to a flat top piston and valve. But that would be a lot more complicated than any of the other mods that I've done, and also quite a bit more expensive, so that one's not exactly on the list right now. However, the power tests that we did in that video were a bit underwhelming. And I don't really want to extend the barrel because I like this um, being kind of a very short rifle or being able to turn it back into a pistol. So I have decided that actually today I am going to be fitting this. And this is a flat top piston and valve from GMAC Custom Parts. Uh, so they're a company based up in Poulton Le Flyde uh, near Blackpool. And they make some great custom parts for the Crossman 1377 and a bunch of other air guns. Any UK-based air gun modders um, are probably quite familiar with them. So we're going to be fitting this today, and then we're going to be rerunning some of those power tests to see what improvement we've made from the stock piston and valve. Now, there aren't a whole lot of instructions available online, or at least not very detailed instructions on how to carry out this modification, how to fit this valve and piston. So I'm kind of going to be fumbling through it today. If you do have any advice, um, any better ways of doing things, please do pop those in the comments. But hopefully what I'm going to produce for you is a set of usable instructions on how to fit a flat top valve and piston for a Crossman 1377. So let's get into it. I'm going to start off by disassembling the gun. Um, it doesn't need to come completely apart for this, but this is probably going to be as close to a complete strip down as I've ever done. Uh, so first thing to come off will be my scope. This is just a cheap uh, SMK scope. Uh, as I said in the previous video with this gun, I found that it's actually worked pretty well for me. Um, so just get that off of the dovetails and set that to the side. Now we're going to remove the stock. Um, if you've just got pistol grips on, you probably won't need to take them off. However, the stock, because of the way it sticks out, will get in the way of one of the bolts that I'll have to remove to take the plug out of the back. When you're doing this, obviously, do make sure that you keep track of which bolt um, came out of where or which screw came out of where. Okay, now as I mentioned in the previous video, I've replaced a lot of the screws on this gun with um, Allen bolts, uh, just because I find they're a bit more hard wearing and a bit easier to work on. Okay, so when removing the second screw that holds this rear plug in, you just want to make sure that you're going to want to make sure that you hold that in place just to make sure that the hammer spring doesn't send the plug shooting across the room. And then just gently let it off. So there's our hammer plug. A hammer spring, which is slightly bent. Um, although we might be doing a hammer spring replacement on this uh, once we've got the flat top valve in. And finally your hammer. You will need to take the safety off. There goes the back of the steel breech. Okay, so next up we can get the uh, breech and barrel off. So obviously we've already got the screw that's holding it at the back here. The other one is a very small one under the bolt that's in here. Uh, now, if you haven't done any work on a gun uh, on your Crossman 1377 before, this will be a hex nut. They're incredibly fiddly, they damage very easily, which is why I've replaced this one with a very small flat head. So I'm going to get that out and get the top of the gun off, so the breech and the barrel.
Okay, at this point we can lift the breech and the barrel off. You want to do this in a nice upwards motion to minimise any damage to the transfer port. I have actually ordered a spare transfer port and a lot of spares for these screws and pins when I ordered the flat top piston, just on the off chance that any of them get damaged during this work. So that just lifts off. There you can see the transfer port. There's where the screw is holding it on. And now we can get the hammer out. So you want to remove the hammer pin. Uh, we've got a spare one of these as well. These actually damage very easily if you put a heavier hammer spring in. Um, if you do want a heavier hammer spring for one of these, you do need to replace this with something harder. So we can then just pop our hammer out. Okay, so this is where the um, the strip down is going to go a bit further than I have in the past. We're actually going to take this, uh, the grip off, and that's because the screw that holds the grip on, this one here, which again I've replaced with an Allen nut, uh, this actually holds the original valve in place. So once again, just get our Allen key in there. and try not to do what I've just done, which is to let the uh, spring and the ball that make up the safety fall out. So we just want to get the safety back together um, before we do anything else, just so there's no risk of us losing that very tiny spring or the very tiny ball bearing. and try not to let the safety fall out again. So now we've got our main tube which houses our valve and our piston. I'm just going to carefully pop the transfer port out. Pop that there for safekeeping and there you can actually see the valve that we're going to be removing. So to actually open this tube up we need to knock out this um, roll pin. So I've got a pin punch pin hammer and we're just going to move over to the side so that we can do that between two pieces of wood. So if like I'm doing here you are trying to do this with the um, pump handle left on I would recommend tying or elastic banding cable tying in some way attaching the pump arm to the cylinder um, it will just stop it from popping open while you're trying to get the roll pin out. Okay, and there is our roll pin out. So I started that off with a pin punch, but I had to finish it off with a bradle. Uh, the pin punch just couldn't go deep enough through the uh, cylinder. Um, I did some googling and it looks like the best way to do this is actually by putting it in a vise and pressing the pin through with a nail. Unfortunately I don't have a big enough vise to do that. Okay so there we've got our rather gunky original factory piston and we now need to push the valve out the cylinder. I'll try giving it a poke using the barrel. That was easier than I expected. Okay, just give it another poke using the barrel. So once it's out this far, what we can do, I think, is pop one of our bolts back in there and use that to get it out. There we have our very grossy old valve. I mean, look at how disgustingly oily that was. I think this barrel's going to want a good clean um, and maybe a bit of deburring before we fit the new one. To clean this, what I've done is I've wadded up some tissue and just used a barrel cleaner to push it through. So I'm just going to do that a couple more times 
to get it nice and clean. Um, now, the few instructions that are available online for fitting a flat top valve and piston um, talk a lot about cleaning, polishing and deburring the inside of the cylinder. Um, I'm going to be honest, this is quite an old gun, it's been used quite a lot, it's never really been used or left anywhere gritty. Um, and as far as I can see, the barrel is, well, rather the inside of this cylinder, once it's been cleaned, looks pretty, pretty shiny um, and not really having any of those burrs that other people are hugely worried about. Um, so I'm in half mind to skip that step. So I'm actually worried about introducing very kind of minor burrs into the barrel while trying to remove some that aren't actually there. Um, if you know this to be absolutely essential and I should have done it, please do let me know in the comments. Um, I do have spare o-rings, so I can redo this install if need be. Let's see how it's getting cleaner with every pass. Let's do a few more, just get some of that old oil and gunk out of the cylinder. Okay, so just looking down there, the internal surface is looking pretty, pretty good. I'm just going to give this a quick blowout with some canned air. Um, just to remove any kind of scraps of tissue or little metal filings, anything that's come away and might damage the O-rings on our new valve and piston. So before we fit the valve, we're going to want to change the piston on here as this will really help with fitting with the valve. This pin is not a sprung roll pin like the other one, the one that held the pump arm on. And this one with a little push should pop right out. At which point you can remove your old valve and fit your new one. And now you notice a few different things with the new valve. Obviously it is a flat, uh, sorry, the new piston. You'll notice it is what we call a flat top piston. It has this flat top which leaves less headroom and forces more air into the valve on every pump. To ensure that we can minimise that headroom, we've also got adjustability here. So these are threaded and there are two locking nuts to lock it at the best length to minimise that headroom. So we'll get this on, that's just the reverse of taking off the old one. Um, there's no up or down on these, so you just pop that onto your pump arm. Take your pen, pop it back in. If just get it in one side first, obviously the brand new one will be a bit tighter having not been worn down by use. And then you can just pop that in. Yeah, just give that little press on a solid piece of wood just to get that nicely in there. Then we're going to use that to lever our valve our new flat top valve into our main cylinder. Uh, now, even though it would have a shorter distance to travel going in what's effectively the back of the gun, do not try and put it down there. There is this ridge that stops it from traveling backwards towards the hammer. If you try and force it over this, you will damage the O-ring. So to get it moving along the cylinder, let's just pop a single drop of oil onto the O-ring. Should also give us a nice airtight seal. Now we're going to want this going in so that this screw hole lines up with this screw hole on the bottom of the gun, which is where the, um, the grip and the trigger assembly attaches. On the other side you're going to want to make sure that the transfer ports line up nicely so you get a really good flow of air from your valve to the barrel. So popping this in the front end, and once again we're just going to use one of our screws to help that along, and after that we're going to use the piston to put it in place. That's as far as we can get it using just the screw. And then just gently using our piston, we can even use it um, as a lever here. So what we're going to do is extend this. We'll adjust, do the fine adjustments on this laser for now. We're just going to extend our adjustment. And then you just want to pop something through the hole at the front. You don't want to put your new spring pin in or your old spring pin just yet. Um, just something that's strong enough to act as a pivot. 
Uh, so I'm just going to use this Allen wrench that I have knocking around. So get the piston into the cylinder. Just put something through there to act as a lever. And what we're then going to do is watch this screw hole to see when our piston, uh, when our valve comes into place. You can see it's gone blue. Push, push, push. And there is our screw hole. Keeping an eye on our screw hole. Sorry, the arm is in the way for you guys. And there we go, that's nicely lined up now. We should be able to get our screw in to hold it in place. So get that screwed on. So remember this is meant to go through another piece, so don't over torque it. We're just using that to hold everything in place. If we look, we've got really nice alignment there on our transfer port. So time to start adjusting the um, time to start adjusting the piston. And you want to do this before you put the O-ring on there, as it'll be much easier to move around before that O-ring is in place. So get the piston in, get the barrel band in. Just hold everything a little bit tighter and make it as if the gun was assembled. And once again, just using an Allen wrench to hold everything in place. So as you can see, we've now overextended the piston, which isn't surprising, seeing as we used it to fit the valve. So we're going to take this out and bring the piston back in a bit. If you look at the literature that came with this from uh, GMAC, the only thing that they have actually told us to do is to get the piston and valve just to touch when the off arm, the cocking arm, is three quarters of an inch from being closed. So that's what we're aiming for and that's what we're going to play around with it until we get it so that the flat top piston and the flat top valve are just making contact when the arm is three quarters of an inch from closed. So that's just flopping around now. So we've now gone too far. We need to find a point between those two where they are just making contact when this is a little way from closed. So I've been faffing about with this off camera and you'll see that after quite a lot of faffing, I did it off camera just because uh, I'm having to work at quite an awkward angle for you to be able to see what I'm doing, but that is stopping at almost exactly three quarters of an inch. It's a little bit over, um, but I reckon it will be alright because it's got that lovely click action that we're all used to when we're pumping these guns. And I've got a few spare O-rings. I now think I've got to grips with taking these apart, so if I have to um, take it apart and fill around with it a bit, it's no big deal. So let's get the O-ring onto our piston. Okay, before we do that, we do want to tighten these up just to make sure that they're not going to slip anywhere. So I'll just grab a spanner and do that. Alright, once you tighten that, it is worth just popping it into the cylinder one last time without the O-ring, just to make sure that you haven't massively moved the uh, position of the piston while you've been adjusting it. Okay, there we've got our three quarters of an inch still, so that's all good. So let's pop this apart and get our O-ring on. So as I mentioned a couple of times already, this does come with a couple of spare O-rings, which is good if you do make any mistakes, need to make any adjustments, or just use the gun so much that you need to replace some seals at some point. So grab one of these out, grab our piston, and we're just going to gently Stretch that over on nice and easy, and then once again we can put a single drop of good quality pellet gun oil on there. 
spread that around just to make sure we've got a nice airtight seal and that this is going to move nice and freely. So I'm trying to get a new spring roll pin in here. So after a lot of clever tricks to try and get the roll pin in, I uh, realised brute force was the way forward. Uh, so I really hope I don't have to take that out again because that was a bit of a nightmare. Time to start reassembly. I'm going to start by putting the grip and trigger assembly back on, making sure that the safety spring and ball bearing are seated where they should be and we haven't lost them. So to do that we'll just crack open the pom pom and we'll very carefully remove that bolt we put in just to hold the valve in place while we fitted the piston. So we want to do this with the gun the right way up, as I've said, just to make sure uh, that you don't upset the uh, safety. Next up, we're going to get the hammer back in. So you're going to want to take your hammer. Slide that into the rear of the gun. And you can see where there's this slightly wider point here. That's where you're going to put your hammer pin in. And then slide it forward. I'm going to pull the trigger to allow it to be slid forward to keep that secure. At this point we can then get ready to put the breech and the barrel back on. A little while back while I was tuning the trigger spring I tried a super light spring in here and it actually fired with the breech open so this shot forward with quite a lot of force and that has ever slightly bent the bolt uh, which is causing some air leakage on firing. If you look at the target shooting in my first video with this gun um, you will notice that sometimes when I fire this jumps in the air um, and that's because of some air leakage so hopefully we can fix that by replacing the probe and the bolt. Uh, now this is one of the GMAC extended probes that pushes the pellet past the transfer port and we're going to be replacing it with another one of the same. We also have a new bolt to go onto the probe, so I'll just grab that out. It's slightly shorter than the old one, which is a shame, but I can't tell if it's damage to the probe or damage to the bolt that's causing these issues, so we are just going to replace both. Get a drop of oil on that O-ring just to make sure all of our seals are nice and airtight and going to last us a while. So we've got our new transfer port bushing and our O-rings to go with it. So the shorter end of this, I'm reliably informed, I think I may have done this wrong in the past, the shorter end of this goes into the cylinder and then the longer end goes up into the breech. Placed our large o-ring into the top of our main cylinder. Next we'll grab our bushing and we're going to put the small o-ring over the large end and push it down. This is apparently the end which is going into our breech. That going into the breech and then pushing that down onto the main body of the gun. That's all nicely married up. Uh, what we can do next is get our screw back in here just to hold everything in place. So it's very fiddly, I've dropped it down the barrel before now. OK, 
Okay, and before you torque that right up, you just want to make sure that everything's sitting flush and that you're not crushing any of the seals for the transfer port so that you've got a really good airtight seal there. Is just to, or well, final thing before we put the stock back on, is to get the hammer spring and the uh, plug back on. So you want to make sure the gun's in the fired position rather than the cocked position. If you are putting your hammer spring back in, so safety off, feel the hammer drop forward. I'll just make it that bit easier to get this back on. And there we have it, one flat top valve and piston fitted and ready to test. So the flat top uh, valve and piston install are done, what we're going to do now is some power tests. So I've got the HTX3000 chronograph and we're going to do three shots at 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 pumps just like we did in the video when I in originally introduced this gun last year. Um, I'll record those, take an average and then we'll work out how much, if any, power increase we've got. The gun is noticeably harder to pump, so the seals do seem to be better, but it could also be that that valve is newer. So without further ado, let's run some tests and um, see what power we're getting. So here I do have 64 layers of corrugated cardboard and the pellet trap behind, so this should be a sufficient backstop. Here we have the chronograph data for the Crossman 1377 with the flat top piston and valve setup. So I took three shots at 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 pumps to get an average velocity, a spread and to work out the muzzle energy. With just three pumps I found that the mean velocity of an 8 grain pellet was 363 feet per second giving a muzzle energy of 2.3 foot pounds. This went up steadily with every additional pump to 10 pumps where we got a mean velocity of 578 feet per second equating to a 5.9 foot pound muzzle energy. Now, were this gun still configured as a pistol, this would only just fall within the UK legal limit for air pistols. Uh, so a really quite impressive increase in power there, especially when we compare it to the origin original muzzle energies, which you can see on the right hand side of the screen. So in a lot of cases, we have nearly doubled the power output at these numbers of pumps. Now, I haven't compared the velocities of the pellets between these two tests, because the test that I've just done with the flat top piston valve setup was a cheap eight grain pellet. Whereas when I tested the original setup, that was using a more expensive 8.4 grain JSB pellet. But I've realized that just doing chronograph tests is a bit of a waste of those good pellets. So on the whole, a really impressive increase in power output. What's maybe less impressive is that we do tend to have a slightly greater spread um, in our velocities between shots. So with the original piston and valve setup, the largest spread we had was at seven pumps. We had a spread of 9.5 feet per second. Here we're getting slightly greater spreads with a spread of 14.7 feet per second with four pumps. Take a look at this plus as a graph. Hopefully you can really see that increase in power 
um, and also the fact that we've got a steadier increase in power from one number of pumps to the next with less tapering off at the top end. With the original piston and valve setup, we noticed as we got up towards eight, nine, 10 pumps, there wasn't actually that much increase as we continue to pump more air into the valve. However, with that flat top setup, we really do see that extra efficiency and it dumping a lot more air to get the pellet out of the barrel that much faster and carrying that much more muzzle energy. So there you have it, that's how you can do a flat top piston and valve conversion on a Crossman 1377 rifle or pistol, whatever you want to turn it into. As I said at the beginning, I didn't really know what I was doing going into this, so I've probably made a bunch of mistakes. If you spotted any, please do give me some constructive criticism down in the comments. If you're watching this to try and find out how to do this conversion, again, please do check out the comments to see what advice people who are more experienced than me can offer you. One question that you might be asking is, why did I choose to do this though? Um, because I previously put myself off of doing this mod. Um, the reasons might not be what you expect. So the first one is I kind of wanted to prove to myself that I could. It was slightly more complicated than the other mods I'd done and I wanted to see if I could do it. Seems I can, maybe to a questionable standard, but I can. And the second one is maybe even sillier, and that's that it's just cool to have the most powerful gun that you're allowed to have. Having something which is like so close to not quite being legal, there's just something a bit cool about that. Um, and maybe that's just me being very repressed and British that uh, makes me want to do that. Um, and the final one is more of a practical consideration, and that's the fact that I have actually got a bit more back into uh, air rifle target shooting recently, and having more power with fewer pumps means that I can keep shooting with fewer pumps and get a nice flat trajectory and hopefully be a bit more on target. Um, a reason which I know a lot of people do this mod is to make the Crossman 1377 more suitable for hunting live quarry. Personally, I still don't think this is a great gun for that for a number of reasons. Firstly, six foot pounds still isn't a lot of power, that's half of what you could have with an air rifle. I've recently bought a new air rifle, which hopefully I'll be showing you soon, and that is full UK power, so it's 11 and a half, 12 foot pounds. Um, this is just underpowered and it does lower the chance of a clean and humane kill. What's more, if you do screw up the first shot and you need to quickly dispatch a second one, this is not a quick gun to operate. You have to pump it up again, you have to um, action the bolts again, it's just not, in my opinion, a humane hunting gun. On the other hand, it is a super light, super combat gun, which to, with skill and practice could probably now be used for hunting. So perhaps as an absolute last resort, as kind of a bug out rifle, this could be a good option. Final thing, and that is a few very small modifications that I did and some that I didn't do off camera. Uh, first one is I've moved the scope back, so previously I had it out here, but because this has next to no recoil and this is a very small scope, one of the easiest ways to get good scope alignment is just to move the scope really far back. Um, it does make it look kind of weird, but it gives me such good alignment that I really don't mind. Uh, another thing that I've done is the hammer spring. I've put a guide in there, so it's the guide that comes with the power spring, the heavier hammer spring just to hopefully get a more consistent hammer action and stop that from bending anymore. What I have not done is actually put that power spring in. So I had that in previously and it broke my hammer pin and I had to replace it. Um, the only reason you would ever want a stronger hammer spring in one of these is if the valve isn't dumping all of its air on that first strike. It would only be if you were still had air in the valve after the gun had fired that you'd need a stronger hammer spring. This after a shot from 10 pumps gives out the tiniest puff if you cock and fire it again, but I don't think that the extra little bit of power that I would squeeze out of it with the operated hammer spring is worth the extra strain and damage that I know those springs do to the internals. Okay, so I think that's about enough for today. Um, hopefully you found it helpful, hopefully you've enjo enjoyed watching me muddle through this modification. As I've said, if you've got any thoughts, any feedback, do put those in the comments. Please do hit the like button and do consider subscribing. We do loads of stuff on this channel, a fair amount of it's air gun stuff, we do some outdoors stuff, we do a bunch of other stuff as well, and it'd be great to have you along for the ride. Right now though, I've been Jamie, this has been Chloe Amateurs, and I'll see you next time.